Hey everyone, welcome to the Ultimate Windows 11 tutorial, part 1. Are you ready to unlock the full potential of your computer and dive into the exciting world of Windows 11? Well, you've come to the right place. Whether you're a seasoned tech enthusiast or a complete beginner, this tutorial is packed with everything you need to know to master Windows 11 like a pro. From the sleek new interface to the latest features and hidden tips and tricks, we're going to cover it all. So, if you've recently upgraded to Windows 11, or you're thinking about making the switch, this tutorial is your roadmap to success. But here's the best part. We're not just going to scratch the surface. We'll delve deep into the nuances of Windows 11, uncovering shortcuts, customization options, and productivity hacks that will revolutionize how you use your computer. Now, this is just the beginning. If you guys enjoy this first part, I'll be posting the following parts one by one. So grab your favorite beverage, get comfortable, and prepare to be amazed as we embark on this epic journey through Windows 11. Trust me, by the end of this tutorial series, you'll be navigating Windows 11 like a seasoned pro. Let's get started. Number 1. The Windows Start Menu Now the first thing you're going to notice about Windows 11 is that the Start Menu is completely different. If you left-click on the menu, you'll see a completely rearranged Start Menu showing your most recently used apps as well as recommended apps down below. At the top, if you click on All Apps, you'll see the complete list of apps and programs that are installed on your computer. And then, you can scroll up and down to find the program that you want to open. Or you can simply type the program name at the top, and then click on the name of the program that pops up, which matches that search term. Additionally, you can do the same thing by clicking on the search box next to the Start button and typing in the name of the program. You can pin any app you want to this menu by scrolling through all apps and then right-clicking on a particular app to pin it to the Start menu. And as you can see here when you go back, there's the app that you just pinned to the Start menu. You can also easily right-click and unpin it, and it will go away. This is super convenient for frequently used programs so you don't have to search for them or clutter up your desktop with a lot of icons. You can easily rearrange any items on your Start menu by simply clicking and dragging the icon to wherever you want it to show up. Let go of your mouse when you place the icon and that's where it will be pinned to. Additionally, for apps that you likely will never use, you can simply right-click on that app on the Start menu, and then choose Unpin from Start menu, and it goes away. The icon disappears from the Start menu, but the program does remain installed in case you need to use it later, and it's still searchable through either of the search boxes up top or down below. If you right-click on your Start button, you will see shortcuts to many of the most common Windows settings, such as Apps and Features, Task Manager, and File Explorer. Just click on the shortcut to open that specific program. Unfortunately, these are locked into place, so you can't move them around or delete them. Next is Shutdown, Restart, or Sign Out. If you need to shut down, restart, or sign out of your computer, you can click the Start button, then select the Power option to the right. Choose whichever one you need, and Windows will then perform that task. To sign out of Windows, right-click the Start button, then click Shutdown or Sign Out, and the pop-out menu will give you an additional option to sign out of your computer. If you want to remove any of the recommended items from the Start menu, just right-click on that item and remove it from the list. The app or file will only disappear from that list. It won't be removed from your system. You'll also have the option to uninstall an app directly from the right-click menu. Number 3. Centered Taskbar The Start menu is kind of the central hub to everything in just about every Windows version that's ever been released, but for some reason, in Windows 11, Microsoft decided to give Windows more of an Apple-like feel by placing the Start menu in the center of the taskbar. For some, this may be kind of cool, but for others, it's kind of irritating. Thankfully, it's an easy fix. Just right-click in any empty area of your taskbar, click on Taskbar Settings, scroll down to Taskbar Behaviors, and then change the alignment here from center to left. Now, as you can see, you have a left-justified start menu that you might be more familiar with from previous versions of Windows. You can always switch it back to center if you change your mind later. So, let's talk about the Control Panel, or what is more commonly called Settings in new versions of Windows. 
If you prefer to use the old school method of accessing your control panel, you can get to it by simply typing control panel into the search box. This works in both Windows 10 and Windows 11. However, Microsoft has integrated the old school control panel with the new settings menu, starting in Windows 10 and even more so in Windows 11. So just be aware that some of the old school features you might be used to in control panel have now been fully migrated into the settings feature in Windows. To access settings, you can right click on the start menu and click settings, or you can left click on the start menu and click settings right here, which should be a pinned app on your start menu, or you can type settings into any search box and get to it that way. All three methods take you to the same place. Next up is desktop personalization. So say you want to quickly change your desktop wallpaper, add a new theme to your Windows layout, or modify what your screen looks like when it's locked. All these can be done through what's called personalization. You just want to find an empty area of your background or wallpaper, right-click, and choose Personalize. From here, you can choose a different photo for your desktop wallpaper by clicking on Background. You can play with different color schemes for title bars and other windows by clicking on Colors. You can completely change the overall look in Windows by clicking on and installing a new theme by clicking on Themes. If you click on Lock Screen, you can choose whether you want a standard photo to show on your Windows lock screen, or if you want to use one that Microsoft thinks you might like using what's called Windows Spotlight. These will be randomly sent to your computer throughout the day. And if you go up to the top right of your screen, you can give it a thumbs up or thumbs down to help personalize the types of pictures you want to be shown on that lock screen. Under Lock Screen Status, you can also select if you'd like to see the weather, mail notifications, or calendar to be shown on that lock screen as well. The Start section allows you to adjust what you would like to see on your Start menu. Now, remember earlier when I showed you the frequently used stuff on your Start menu? This section right here is where you can turn all of that on or off. If you'd rather not see anything at all, you can also enable Show Most Used Apps to show on that Start menu and control whether you want recently opened items to show on the Start menu Jump Lists, and File Explorer. Finally, click on Folders, and you can control which frequently used folders you'd like to appear next to the Power button. For example, if I clicked on Settings and File Explorer, now when I go to the Start button next to the Power button, you see the Settings and File Explorer. It's just another way to quickly access frequently used folders. Back on the main personalization screen, the Taskbar section helps you decide what you want to see on the taskbar at the bottom of your screen. The task view here, which is this icon, is very similar to the old Alt tab in Windows, but now you can do that with just one click. The widgets option is here on the taskbar as well, and lets you quickly access news, weather, stocks, and other things that you might find useful. If you don't care about widgets, click here to turn them off, and the widgets icon now is gone from your taskbar. The next section in personalization is for font management. From here, you can easily add new fonts by dragging them and dropping them directly into this box right here, or you can view the pre-installed fonts already on Windows by scrolling through this list. The last thing on the personalization list is your device usage. Depending on what you primarily use your computer for, you can select one or more of the options, and Microsoft will then deliver personalized tips, ads, and recommendations based on those settings. Personally, I always make sure these are set to off because nobody wants to see any more ads than absolutely necessary. Now that we've gone through all the basic personalization settings, let's head into some more advanced personalization settings that you might find useful. So, right-click on your background or wallpaper here again, go to Display Settings. From here, you can make all kinds of changes to how your display looks. So, click on Scale and Layout. Adjust this number up or down if you want to increase the visibility of text and apps as a whole, or you can actually click on Scale it and Layout. Those scissors for each specific thing that you want. So, you could modify just the font size or the display size independently. In the next section, you can adjust the slider up or down to increase or lower your desktop resolution. The higher the resolution, the smaller everything gets, and vice versa. Now, if you have a monitor that can support vertical display, you can slide over here and choose Portrait instead of Landscape. You can also choose to flip the screen as well, 
but be very careful because it's incredibly awkward to try and flip it back if you accidentally change this. Moving left with your mouse is now down, and moving up with your mouse is moving left now, so it's better just to leave this alone unless you specifically need it. If you use multiple displays on your computer, this next section allows you to make changes, including which of your screens you wish to be the primary display, and also changing individual screen resolutions. So that pretty much covers all of the Windows personalization. Now let's move on to other Windows settings that you might find useful. Perhaps you may want to add a new account on your PC, maybe for your kids to use so they don't mess up any of your personal settings. Or maybe you want to switch from a Microsoft account to a local account, or from a local account back to a Microsoft account. You can do all of this in the User Account Settings in the Main Settings page of Windows. So from the search bar, you can just type Settings, and this will likely bring up the Personalization Settings. Here's what you want to do. Click on this menu here, and then from there click on Accounts. Now, if you scroll down to where it says Your Info, you'll see all the specific user settings according to how you initially set up your Windows the very first time. This is where you can change your avatar or login photo or switch from a local account to a Microsoft account, or vice versa. So back to the main account screen. If you'd like to add or remove a user on this computer, scroll down and click on Other Users. If there are any other users here that you'd like to remove, you will see them here, and you can just click the drop-down arrow next to that and click Remove. You will get prompted to delete not only the user account, but all of the user's data that's stored on the computer. Make sure you have everything you need backed up from that user account before you delete it because once it's gone, it's gone forever. So, to add a user, you're going to click on Add an Account. On the right-hand side, you'll get a Microsoft prompt to either use this person's Microsoft login, or if you just want to create a local account, say for the kids, click on I don't have this person's sign-in information, then click on Add a user without a Microsoft account, then give the person a username. It can be their personal name or a nickname. And if you want them to have a password, go ahead and enter it here and then confirm it. If you don't want a password, just leave it blank. Click Next. Now if you want this user to have administrator rights on the machine where you just created that account, click that drop-down arrow and then change account type. Change it from standard user to administrator and then click OK but be aware that doing this allows that user profile to have full permissions to everything on the computer, including your personal profile information and any files you've saved under your profile. As an aside, it is a good practice to create a standard user for daily usage and a special administrator account as well, and that helps mitigate malware and virus attacks. Now, from the main accounts window, if you want to change how you log into the computer, such as facial recognition, or a login pin, you can do that under sign-in options. Choose the login method that works best for you. There is no best way, so choose the one that makes logging in easiest for you. The next section is Windows Backup. Now, if you're using a Microsoft account to log in and you want to have all your files and settings automatically backed up to your Microsoft account, this is where you can make those changes. Select the option that fits your needs and you're good to go. Thank you for tuning in to part 1 of our Windows 11 tutorial series. If you enjoyed the video and found it helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel. By doing so, you'll stay updated and won't miss out on the next part of the series.